working. And listen, keep working, but listen. I don't want you to think of it as a block. It is a block, but I want you to think of it as an attack on the arm. It's not that you're trying to. So, um, the name of the art that I, uh, I think it's called EIO, or EI, EI Gypsum, depending on your application. Uh, it's basically uh, the art of the quick draw sort, uh, which means that you're going you're gonna to draw and cut in a single movement. Uh, and then there's various applications and follow ups uh, from there. Uh, different from, uh, say, kendo or kenjutsu, where the idea is, is your sword is out, you're in battle, and then you're engaging your, your opponent. Um, Yago yeah, sort of grew out of um, uh, wearing the sword in everyday life. So wearing the sword in the marketplace, or, or going to uh, clan meetings, or things like that. Where uh, you'd be wearing the sword uh, out on the street, and somebody would, would um, pull some caps or a threat. So um, I'll go through some of the... Um, Applications, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you a bunch of different topics from some different styles, and uh, we'll show you a little application and uh, maybe some questions at the end of the time. Uh,
associate in the UEI was the file that I, I studied with for probably uh, 10, 12 years or so. Uh, and within that art, there was our, our, our shodan, or beginning level, uh, was Omori Ryu, so that's his own school, 12 katas. And then uh, our chudan, or mid-level, was a Hasegawa Ishin Ryu, like the mid-level training. And then our Okuden, or uh, senior level training, was a, yet another Ryu. So you're learning a, a set of katas. Um, some systems had 18 forms, some had 10, some had 12, some had uh, 6. Uh, so you learn all these different different schools. And uh, they each had a different thing to, to teach. Um, one of the last ones I did was from uh, the Hasengao Ishin Ryu. Uh, they're all done from Tantihiza, which is this, uh, this dance. So you're sitting this way, and somebody attacks you from the front or the back or the side. And so all this stuff is done on the ground, moving different positions on the floor. Um, uh, Seite EI is uh, a system that was formed, there, are, there were 10, there are now 12 forms. And uh, what happened was all the um, EI people uh, in Japan got together and said, you know what, we need something we can all practice when we get together. Uh, do you guys, you know, do draws this way, do cuts that way, and so on and so forth. So um, EI Gata is a, uh, a compilation of some of this style, some of that style, some of the other style. And everybody supposedly has it. So when you get together to train, everybody's got Seite. It's like everybody has Taiki Open 1. You know, it's a pretty foundation card that most people have that. It's sort of like, uh, sort of like that. Um, we do a lot of things that are kneeling or sitting or, or standing. Uh, some of the upper level stuff um, is very situational, where there's some forms where uh, you're being you've been captured and you're being escorted somewhere, and there's guards on either side of you. And you change your, your cadence, you change your step, and you take the guards out in a certain, uh, certain sequence or certain fashion in a logical, a logical way. Uh, other situations, you are um, you're crossing a bridge, where there may be an E that you have to like crawl under with your sword, or uh, going back and forth on one side or the other of a fence or something like that. So it becomes very situational. And if you just look at the form, it doesn't really why are you doing that. It doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, but when you see the obstacles and the other people there, it kind of makes sense, much like your your cut there. I'd like to demonstrate one um, one or two applications. Uh, third part, Mr. Susi, is he still here? Uh, this is a book pen. So, um, the last form I showed was uh, Uhigumo, and uh, <coughs> do it again, it's like, like so. Just see if you can figure out what's, what's going on here. So that's essentially the, the form, okay? The idea is... Okay, so, uh, so the idea is you're sitting, uh, and there's uh, an attacker on your right. Okay, we are actually sitting next to me. And um, what sometimes would happen is um, a samurai or a uh, bad person would grab your sword by the handle and take it out. So if I allow him to grab this and start pulling it out, I, I can't really stop it. Because if I grab it, I'm going to cut my hand. So once it's out, it's, he's, he's got it now. It's best not to let that happen. <laughs> so we're going to assume, just for the sake of our day, he, he's got a sword also, but he wants to use my sword. So as he reaches over, I'm going to step out and out of the way, and I block his hand and move this away. Now he goes to redraw, goes to grab his sword, my sword comes right here. So now he can't draw. So now when I draw, I'm going to bring this across his chest, and I'm going to lay him down. Here. Now his hand is out here, sword in hand. So I step here, then I can cut. And this, uh, this snapping movement, it's called the chip blade. It's basically just shaking the schmutz off your blade. And you push your ass. Let me draw that fish. Okay. So that's a uh, basic, basic application. Ah, uh, you're dying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at this moment. I like this part. Yeah. <laughs> so those are just uh, some some applications. Uh, we're not going to take this one. Uh, so the standing forms. We could have uh, two people walking. Um, down a path, and one person decides to draw on the, on the other person. Okay, so you're gonna stand like, oh yeah, I'm gonna maybe get you started here, ready. You walk along the wood. Here's here's the attack that comes out. So this one, uh, the form is called Murote Ski, and actually there, there are three people involved, there's two attackers. Um, so this one, you're walking along, and someone draws a sword, and he's gonna cut your hands are overhead. So you stop the sword cut by putting the sword on the wrist, so they can't cut because the hand is there. Then you drive them back, and you're gonna thrust into the belly. Second attacker is coming in, so we cut them down, and then we return and we cut this person. 
down again. So we'll have you uh, set the, uh, the Jonah camps. So when we're walking along, he comes to the Jonah and he's going to cut me right down. So my sword is right here. So if he tries to cut, I'm, I'm on him. I've got his, his hand there. If I hold him here, if I drop down, now I can stick right in the belly where he may avoid that. So I can back here and he comes again and I can cut him down. So we try to visualize as best we can uh, your techie or your attacker or attackers. A lot of times there's several of them, uh, just like you do with your empty-handed forms. Uh, but we have our, our sword that we use instead. One time from Unsu. where we sort of are very static. So we've tried to work a bit on an exercise which is sort of inspiring, but it's sort of somewhat prearranged, but it's not static. So it's <coughs> going back and forth. We do this part on fairly slow motion, hopefully. Sort of on a, how would I say, on 
on a level of safety as far as we can take it without really breaking our butt. So we agree that we should not be throwing. <laughs> <laughs> Did he agree or you just agree? <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it earlier, but it's hard to say what we remember. <laughs> <laughs> but considering that we were able to remember to put those two keys in, there was a good chance. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just repeat it up. But. So we we'll take this pretty static, where other one is defending and other one is attacking. And attacking with certain clarity, but with certain intent. Yeah! 